Well, hello there. Today we're going to be talking about more red flags to look out for when you are trying to suss out to see if someone is toxic, do they have narcissistic traits. I'm answering your questions. Thank you so much for writing in and suggesting this content. And I've got you. Let's go. All right, well, it's great to see you. So today we're gonna to be talking about, well, more signs to look out for when you're trying to determine, is this person toxic or could this be possibly even someone that has narcissistic traits? Well, what I was saying before is the first thing to look out for and really kind of tune in, which is when you're around this person, when you're talking to them or hanging out, do you feel confused? So when we think about the hallmark sign for toxicity is, are you always feeling confused by the, what the person says, maybe the contradictory, like what they say and what they do? Are you someone that's confused because their behaviors are inconsistent? Is it something where you're getting the hot and cold treatment? Maybe things were great in the beginning and now things are kind of waxing and waning. And that might be typically, if you're out there on the dating site, typically that'll happen between one to three months. You'll see a shift. Now here's something to be on the lookout for. Love dating apps, they can be really healthy, amazing, tons of great love stories, but you have to be careful because they are filled with narcissists. Narcissists look for supplies of people, for ego, admiration, worship, connections, and what better way than to have people always choosing you, saying how amazing they are and they wanna go out with you or they wanna match with you. So it's really important when you're on dating sites to have your eyes open, pay attention to how fast moving things are, how much this person wants to really push the limits or how fast this person wants to start sexual intimacy because that's something that creates that false connection of emotional connection. And the earlier you have sex, well, then the more you're compromised, okay? But just when you're looking at dating websites, it's really important to take things slow. And it's not about this person proving themselves to you. It's about them earning their way into your life, into your heart. Some Someone who is healthy, who is boundary, who sees you as someone who could be a, a real partner to have a meaningful relationship, maybe even looking at marriage, is going to be okay with you having boundaries. They're not going to have a problem with you saying no. They're going to be able to meet you where you are, especially if you want to take things slow sexually. That is a sign, self-respect, and you are looking for something really intentional, okay? So again, we don't think in all or nothing terms, but something to look out for. Now, what are we looking for? Look for when this person's telling you about themselves, number one, what are they saying about their exes? And you know, someone shouldn't be oversharing in the beginning anyway. That's another sign, okay? So it's one thing to say, hey, I see on your profile you're divorced. Are you divorced? When did that happen? What happened? We want to share just kind of like a, a generic statement. If you are divorced, it's yeah. You know, I was divorced and it's been a year. We share custody of the kiddo and it just didn't work out. It's not a need to know basis. Early in the game, you don't have to over explain it. And this person should not be over explaining it to you. Okay, so if it's a boundary issue, something to keep an eye on. But the red flag is demonizing the ex, spending the whole date talking about the ex. Like you're a therapist and it's a therapy session. That's a red flag. Also look for irresponsibility. How responsible is this person? Can they acknowledge or accept their part in things? Do they take any type of accountability or instead do they explain it away, rationalize it, defend it? Look for that. The next thing you want to look for is what's going on with their empathy? Do they have any deficits of being empathetic, of having a conscience, feeling embarrassment, guilt, shame, remorse, okay? Can they resonate with other people's feelings? Can they validate your feelings? Can they also let it be about you and not hijack it and make it about them? And are they also driven by just discounting others and putting others down and all their exes are nuts and they never appreciate it? Again, look for, are they never the problem? Because someone who's healthy and has a growth mentality is gonna say, you know, yeah, I did my part. And, um, and then what we wanna see is, what is the growth that you're seeing? Now, I love Bachelor and I don't know if you were watching Charity's season of The Bachelorette, but it makes me think of a recent episode where Charity was really trying to explore with this person who was sharing some of the, the things that they did in the past and she was really looking at you know what work have you done since then so she wasn't holding them punitive of like you know hey i'm gonna demonize you or all or nothing because people make mistakes we all make mistakes right but what she was doing which is what you want to do in a relationship which is kind of suss out okay what was the circumstances of the situation what since then have you done and also did you have insight did you feel remorse or guilt did you feel bad about it 
what continued growth, and now what are you realizing about in relationships, that problem-solving corrective behavior. And so that's a really great example, kind of like in reality TV and pop culture you can look at is, okay, maybe this person made a mistake. Okay, proceed cautiously, but find out have they done the work to heal? Have they done the work to correct the problems? Are they willing also to see that, well, there's some accountability and ownership that they did too. All right, so the next one is, of course, when we look at can they do problem solving? Because that's key in a relationship. So some with narcissistic traits is very reactive and punitive, okay? They don't do reciprocity, give and take. They don't do, you know, a lot of times being able to even adapt to solutions, to compromise, to come up with solutions. They love to keep score instead. So they'll remind you of when you did the things and you didn't do the things and they'll match that. But it's never this, what can we do moving forward as a partner, as a couple? Or if it's at work, like a team, and if it's a boss, instead they're gonna be self-righteous about the problem, they're gonna be rigid, they're going to blame shift it onto somebody else, always blaming someone else. They're gonna complain and let's say, everyone else let me down, they're the victim. Because remember, narcissists have to win, they have to be like the goat, or they play victimhood when held accountable. So look for that too. And also lots of complaints about things, but not ever making any changes. They just kind of sit in this place of victim and helplessness. We see that more with the covert narcissist. Now, what are some things to look out for is, well, when you're dating someone or you're looking at someone, do they have difficulties with dysfunctional patterns? Like, are they always yelling or throwing things? Do they have an anger management problem? Is there no movement and progression of growth and healing? Also, is there a, a lot of times of system abusing? Like, oh yeah, I always get out of um, speeding tickets or I go to court and I charm the judge and I get it reduced. You know, again, braggadocious. Is there a history of pattern? But not just having problems, but abusing the system, you see? There's nothing wrong with someone who has had divorced or, you know, has had a speeding ticket or car accident. Things happen, there's nothing wrong with that. But does this person exhibit a system of entitlement of they beat the system or they are abusing the system. And that can be in anything. Chronic relationship instability, never happy in relationships, multiple marriages perhaps, having a lot of friendship turnover, maybe hearing that they're just a toxic friend. And when talking to that person, you might see this air of victimhood and helplessness, also self-righteousness at the same time that, well, they did that to me and I'm right, but then also I'm the victim. They might have a history of, or they might be showing this part to you of threatening, demanding behavior, some arrogance and a lot of uncertainty. Like in other words, you never really can get to the answer. There's a lot of uncertainty. Maybe there's this psychological abuse tactic called word salad that they use where you, you try to talk to them about something and it goes around in loops and you never get your answer. And before you know it, you're on another tangent talking about something else and you're more confused than ever. And then the last real big sign to work, watch out for is they have an answer for everything. They can rationalize it away. They can justify everything, but they have an answer for everything. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate this content suggestion. Be on the lookout for more content that you commented and wrote in for and really wanted me to speak more on. And until next time.